Sí, muy buenas tardes a todos. Vamos a empezar aquí en unos minutitos. Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? Hi, Jorge. Hey. Good Hello. evening. Hi, everyone. Doing well, doing well. Hope everyone's doing well as well. Uh, it's almost six o'clock, so we'll get started in just a little bit. Good evening and hello from La Porte and from Baytown. Thank you for coming. Pasadena. I love it. All right, well, what just a few more seconds to let some people catch up and we'll get started in just a second. All right, good evening, everyone. Hello and welcome uh, to the Parks and Trails final public meeting. Uh, we will get started now with some interpretation and Zoom instructions with Jose, Jose, Jose Eduardo. Jose? Jose? Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Jose Eduardo. Hi, good evening. My name is Jose Eduardo. And before we start with our presentation, we're going to go over some instructions about interpretation, first in Spanish and then in English. Hello. Uh, the presentation, I'm gonna go over the interpretation instructions first in Spanish and then I'll do it in English. Um, como verán aquí, el, el evento de esta noche va a ser bilingüe en español e inglés, por favor. As you see, today's event will be bilingual in English and Spanish. Feel free to participate in whatever language you feel most comfortable. In your screen, if you're in a computer laptop, you would see a globe at the bottom of your page. You can click on this icon and select language interpretation, and you can select the language that you would like to listen and participate in today's event. If you are connected through a tablet or a mobile device, smartphone, you would see three dots at the bottom right hand side of your screen you will select them and then select the language that you would like to participate and then click done and you'll be ready i want to remind you that for those who will be presenting speak at a moderate pace at a clear voice and one person at a time and we want to remind you that if you have any issues with your interpretation don't suffer in silence and let us know through the chat box so we can help you all the English instructions, if we want to go to the next slide. Uh, so uh, 
as you can see, tonight's meeting is going to be bilingual in English and Spanish. So we welcome you to speak and participate in the language in which you feel most comfortable. Um, you should be seeing, if you're joining us on your computer or laptop, you should be seeing a globe icon that shows up on the bottom part of your screen that says interpretation. You're going to click on that and you're going to select the language in which you would like to listen and participate in today. If you are connected through a tablet or a smartphone, you're going to find the three little dots on the corner of your screen, bottom corner. Same, you're going to click on language interpretation, select the language that you want to hear and participate in, and then click on done at the end. Uh, we want to remind you for all the speakers, please speak at a moderate pace, uh, loudly and one at a time. And please don't suffer in silence if the interpretation is not working. Please let us know through the chat so we can help you out. Okay. And uh, we also, um, now you should be hearing the interpretation if you selected um, uh, a language. Um, or if you selected English, you should be hearing my voice, but we want to remind you a couple of logistic things. Please mute yourself when not speaking so that we can minimize the disruptions during the meeting. Um, also, if you have any technical difficulties, please text us at 253-414-4391 so that we can provide you with technical assistance via text message, and Clara will be helping us out with that to, uh, today. Thank you. Thank you, Jose Eduardo. Um, my name is Jorge Bustamante, and I am the planning manager with Harris County Precinct 2, Commissioner Garcia's office. Uh, we're really glad that you're joining us tonight. And I want to start by talking a little bit about why we're here. And we're going to elaborate on this a little bit later in the presentation. But the goal of this project was to develop a comprehensive master plan for parks, trails, and open areas. Uh, and it included individual park and trail assessments, recommendations, and most importantly, thorough community engagement. Um, because ultimately that is the goal of all of our planning efforts, to understand what the community needs and have that guide our efforts here at Precinct 2. So now for this project, we're in the home stretch. Uh, and so we'll present what has been done so far and some exciting concepts that will guide us as we move into implementation. All right, so moving on to the agenda for today, um, we have a welcome from Commissioner Garcia, and we're going to be going over um, the, some projects that we have done here at Precinct 2, because we're not waiting for plans to be done. We're uh, actively working on projects, as well as working on planning projects. Um, then we'll go over to the actual uh, master plan project recap, uh, elaborate on what the engagement uh, that had happened, uh, the goals and objectives uh, and recommendations that, that will guide our efforts. Um, we'll also touch on design guidelines that's gonna help us provide like a comprehensive feel for all of our parks and trails. And again, some case studies that are you know, really at the forefront of what, what we're thinking about doing in the future. All right, so with that, um, I'll introduce my boss, Commissioner Garcia, to welcome you and kick off uh, this exciting project, this exciting meeting. Great. Thank you, Jorge, and good evening, everyone. I'm excited about the conversation we're gonna to have tonight. Um, and I just wanna thank you for taking time out of your very, very busy schedule. But this is the way um, we get it done. We work with you, we engage you, uh, we empower you to work with us and, uh, and produce something positive and beneficial and transformative for everyone involved. So thank you again for uh, joining us tonight. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of tonight's discussion, I want to make sure to spend a, just a minute talking to you about the pandemic that we are still in. Even though it's starting to feel a little bit better, uh, it is still, uh, we are still in the midst of a pandemic. I still use my mask. I still am cautious. I still have my sanitizer, and I would ask each and every one of you to continue to practice these safety uh, measures so that we can get out of this pandemic once and for all. And my family and I are fully vaccinated. For those of you who have been fully vaccinated, I thank you. You're saving your life. 
and you're helping to save those around you. And for those of you who still have not yet gotten your vaccine, listen, I completely get it. All I ask is please consider visiting with your doctor, a medical professional, and work to get those questions uh, answered, those concerns answered. And I hope that that may lead you to getting your vaccine as well. And for those of you who have been vaccinated, I ask you to please be an ambassador of the vaccine. Make sure your friends, your family, your neighbors, your coworkers, uh, even a stranger at the store, know that you're vaccinated and that you would encourage them to do so as well. Uh, there's an important data point that the CEO of the Harris County Hospital District, the Harris Health System, has shared with me. That of the people being uh, getting sick with the uh, with the virus, who are fully vaccinated, that virtually none of them are dying like they did previously. For those that are still losing their lives and losing the battle against the virus, most, if not all, are not fully vaccinated. And so that tells me that the vaccine is working. So I would encourage everyone to please give it some uh, thought and consideration uh, because it could make the world of difference. And now for why we're here tonight. I'm excited, as I mentioned earlier, because what you're gonna be hearing is literally about a year's worth of engagement and feedback uh, from you to us about our parks and trails master plan. This is exciting because this is a part of my revive to thrive strategy to lift up all of uh, precinct two, to lift up areas that have felt long forgotten and to make sure that you are part of a strategic and committed plan to improve the quality of life and to make sure that you're getting a well needed and deserving investments into your communities and especially into those areas like our parks and trails that help to connect us all and help bring us all together. And so for that reason, uh, this is an important time for us to hear about the feedback we've gotten from you, uh, the community. You know, the I've always told people that, you know, when I was growing up, uh, my uh, trail uh, was the embankments of the bayou, not anything I encourage anyone to do today. But we are so fortunate that today we do have concrete uh, trails along our bayou system, thanks to the work of the Buffalo Bayou Partnership. But there are trails that we can bring that will connect neighborhoods, uh, connect uh, commercial sectors, so that while you're biking like I do on a regular basis, that you may stop at a store, pick up uh, uh, something to eat, stop and get a cup of coffee, uh, stop and do some light shopping. Um, that is how we lift our communities up. And that's what I'm excited about. And then our parks, our parks should be a place where we continue to uh, grow, to exercise, to enjoy life, uh, to reconnect with our families and our friends, to celebrate, uh, to meditate, uh, to exercise, but to be a community. That's uh, the vision I have for our parks and for them to be all inclusive. And we'll be hearing more about that a little later. And so I'm again, I'm excited and I want to thank everyone who has participated in giving us feedback and insight to your ideas, your concerns, your wishes, your desires. And that is what is making this plan uh, so, so exciting and so valuable. And then I also want to remind you that no matter whether it be where to get your vaccine, where to get your COVID test, how to apply for rental assistance, for small business assistance, uh, how to find out when the roads are being done and when we're going to uh, uh, maintain that ditch in your community, you can do that all by visiting my website at h. C P number two 
www.facebook.com and then follow us on every one of our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, to, uh, Twitter, and, uh, and then you will get information instantaneously. If Mother Nature tends to visit us and she's bringing problems, we'll communicate, communicate to you through those mediums on a, on a uh, daily and updated basis. So please follow us on all of those social media uh, pages. Now to uh, some updates about what is happening in Precinct 2. First, let me take you over to Jim Fontino Park. And there is where you will find the phenomenal yellow bird mountain bike trails. Now, let me quickly tell you about yellow bird. Yellow bird isn't the name of a yellow bird. Yellow bird refers to our veterans, our military veterans who were key and instrumental partners in this particular project. Yellow bird uh, trails is a way for our veterans who want to decompress and fight the effects of post-traumatic stress disorder. And this particular trail was built and designed in part by voluntary veterans of uh, Project Yellowbird. And so I'm very, very proud of this. I want, and this, it, this is a, a trail for all abilities, all ages, whether you are an experienced mountain bike um, uh, rider or whether you are young and want to learn how to do it, this is a trail for you and your family. So please, and a lot of people from across the region are, uh, are, are hearing about it and they're coming to visit us. So that means more business for our businesses. So uh, Yellow Bird Fountain, uh, yeah, Operation Yellow Bird and Yellow Bird Mountain Bike Trails over at Jim Fontino Park. And then we want to make sure that uh, if you are a night shift worker like I used to be, that and you want to get a run in like I used to, I used to get off of work at uh, five, six o'clock in the morning, and I just had to get a run in, and I would go run around Northline Mall, for those of you who remember Northline Mall, uh, but it was dark. It wasn't necessarily the safest way to do it, but I was a policeman already, and then uh, when I used to train for when I was a boxer, I used to run down the streets, and they weren't very well lit. I had no trails, uh, so I did the best I could, but back then, there was less cars on the roads uh, than there are today, and that's why we're installing solar power walking trail lights. That way, if you want to get in uh, a walk in the early evening, it's already getting a little dark. I don't encourage anyone to be out there late at night, but these solar power lights will help to make your walk that much more safer and that much more enjoyable. Everything we do in Precinct 2 is focused on your safety and well-being first and foremost, and then your comfort and your experience. And then we have playground uh, enhancements that we're doing. This one is Olson Park. Uh, this was a playground replacement project. And again, as we've talked about all inclusiveness, this is another one of our parks that is providing amenities for uh, young people and adults of all abilities, whether you have a physical disability or not, this park is for you. And so it's, it's beautiful, the colors are very exciting, uh, they, they welcome you, and, uh, and again, all the amenities are for all people of all abilities, and I love it. Uh, so this is Olson Park. Next, I'll take you to David Burnett Park. Uh, in this park is, uh, or rather over there in Bay Area Park. Uh, oh, we're trying to find, okay, Bay Area Park with a brand new splash, splash pad. Not a splash pad, splash pad. And, uh, and then we have new playground equipment over at Highlands Park. Uh, these are the improvements that we're making because if you're like me during this pandemic, I got... Um, cabin fever. <clears throat> I got tired of being at home. So I went out and bought me a bike. And so I'm on the trails all the time. And some of you wanted to get out and exercise out in somewhere safe and out in the open area. And this is what we're bringing to you. So 
Bay Area, Bay Area Park now has a splash pad and Highlands Park has brand new exercise equipment. Next is uh, our trail sweeper. You know, I tell you what, <clears throat> I ride the trails in the county and I ride the trails in the city, city of Houston. And boy, do they need a trail sweeper in the city. Uh, the trails in the city aren't as nice as the ones in the county. And so I'm so excited, but this is what our trail sweeper looks like. And listen, whether it's Olson Park, whether it's Burnett Park, whether it's the Bay Area Park, whether it's Highlands Park, whether it is this trail sweeper, so far there is over uh, close to rather a million four hundred thousand dollars that we have been investing into these parks to make them better, safer, and more enjoyable for you. And so now we'll go over to North Shore Rotary. This particular <clears throat> addition actually came from another park that we're doing some work on. And this equipment was still beautiful, still usable, but North Shore Rotary didn't have these amenities. And so we just transplanted that equipment from one park to another and brought a investment or a, uh, a, uh, a, 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 an enhancement that really cost us very, very little. And so this is the equipment uh, that you can enjoy, your family can enjoy, your babies can enjoy over at North Shore Rotary. And so now uh, we will go to, uh, and, they, and this is uh, a value of $320,000. And now we'll go over to Van Zandt. <clears throat> now, Van Zandt uh, was just a street. If you look to the picture to your left, that is what it looked like. See, the, uh, the, uh, the, the barricade is still there. But look at all that shrubbery. And then in that shrubbery was trash. In that shrubbery was snakes and rats and possums and raccoons and stray dogs that were going over into people's yards. That condition had been there, so tells me a neighbor that lives across the street for over 30 years. And yes, Maria, I'm glad that you have visited. It's awesome, right? <clears throat> well, Van Zandt was actually a county road that had never been maintained. And so the neighbor to the right, you can barely see that house there. I was visiting with that neighbor and she said, ah, in Spanish, she was telling me about all the rats and snakes and raccoons and possums and dogs and cats that were, you know, coming over to her yard. She was like, please do something. And I said, I'll investigate. And she goes, no one has ever done anything. And I've complained about it. And I promised her that I would. We researched it and bam, come to find out. The county owned that piece of property. And so my team got to work and brought this beautiful pocket park that people are now enjoying and it's bringing the community together. And now we have a beautiful pocket park for everyone to enjoy. That beautiful park is what? Only $75,000 uh, that it is uh, costing. And now to something near and dear to my heart, and I hope to yours. This is the James Driver All-Inclusive Park. This park is near Little York in 59. We have not yet opened it. It's still under construction, <clears throat> but we're getting very, very close to opening it up. And folks, let me tell you, it's going to be gorgeous. You will say, this is Precinct 2. This is my neighborhood. We've never had anything like this. That's the feedback for the people who have seen it. That's the feedback I'm currently getting. But my commitment was to make sure that we were bringing the investments you should have been getting all along 
to your community. This park is what we call, yes, Michelle, it is going to be fantastic. It's already fantastic. But this park is, we call it all inclusive because the, the idea of this park started with my commitment to children with physical and cognitive disabilities. Too often, our children with disabilities are forgotten about. We don't think about them often enough. They are amongst the largest underrepresented minority group in Harris County. And although physical or cognitive disability has never touched my family, I know that it's touched the families of others and I wanted to do something special. But I also didn't want to make anyone who didn't have a disability of any sort to feel uninvited. So this is how we came with all inclusiveness for everyone. This park uh, will have something for everyone and it will be magnificent, beautiful lighting. It will have soccer fields. It'll have a beep ball field for those with visual impairments because when you can't see a ball, you got to hear for it. Hence, beep, a beeping ball, beep ball field. And so I'm excited. This one is getting a significant investment. This one is getting something in the neighborhood of $8 million. And when it's ready to be open, I'm, I'm going to invite you all and I want you all to come join. That's why I want you to log on to our social media accounts because that's where we will announce the grand opening. And I really want you to come out and experience it. And then our hike and bike trails. And I want, if anybody is a active biker, like I try to be, then I want you to invite me to come bike with you. And if you're not, we'll figure it out, okay? We'll find a bike for you, Luisa. We're gonna find a bike for you, and or I'm gonna put you on a, on, a, on a chair behind me and we're gonna go out for a ride. But I want everyone to go out and enjoy these trails. It's healthy, it's good for your mind, it's good for your body, it's good for the soul, and it's good for the community. And so this is segment, uh, this is the uh, Bay Area Hiking Bike Trail, segment three, which is a million five hundred thousand that we have constructed. Now we go to segment six, which is 215,000, uh, all in the Bay Area. And the reason I'm showing you all these different uh, segments and parks is because this is all a precinct two. I'm not leaving anyone out. And so now we go to segment, uh, this is segment six. Now we go to segment two. Uh, and this one is getting a million $500,000. And this is, uh, this is, I've already ridden uh, a lot of these trails, been out there. This is exciting. It's beautiful, a lot of shade. So I would encourage you that if you don't want to go to the beach, then at least get on the Bay Area hike and bike trails and enjoy them and experience them. It's, it's beautiful. It's peaceful. It's wonderful. And so I hope to see you on the trails one day. Now we'll go over to a potential project that the mayor of Baytown, Mayor Capatillo and I have been talking about. It is the Russell Park Master Plan. It will be a partnership in collaboration with the city of Baytown. And this is the idea. You know what? I, I, I don't dislike anybody, but I am tired of hearing people say, I'm going to go to the west side of Harris County. I'm going to go to the to Katie, I'm going to go to, to the Galleria. We have beautiful things here in Precinct 2 on the east side of Harris County. And this is going to be one of those that will be transformative and it'll bring people uh, to East Harris County. And so I'm excited about the work and discussions that uh, Mary Capatillo and I are having. And this is going to be a beautiful, beautiful uh, park once we put all the pieces together. So I'm excited uh, about this. 
And now uh, I'll just say that uh, this is an example of all that we're doing. And if you want to enjoy them, our parks especially, this next segment will be for you because I want you all to know that we're trying to make everything easy and accessible and available for everyone at the touch of your phone or your computer or your laptop. And so I'm excited that Chris will now talk to us about how to make reservations for our parks. Thank you, everybody. And I look forward to hearing the discussion a little later. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Uh, welcome everyone who's joined us recently. My name is Katie Coyne. I was the project manager on the consultant team for the plan and I couldn't be more proud of uh, the work that we've done with Commissioner Garcia and his staff, as well as the Harris County engineering staff. Um, I did just wanna take a really brief moment to touch base with anyone who might need translation support. Uh, if you've already set that up, uh, you can you can take a, a, a one minute brain break, but I'm gonna hand it back over to Jose Eduardo. I know that a lot of folks have joined in the last 20 minutes or so. So Jose Eduardo, I don't know if you would mind uh, just really briefly walking us through in Spanish, how to do uh, the interpretation setup. I can say in English, uh, you should have uh, at the very bottom of your screen, uh, uh, an icon that looks like a globe. If you click on that, you can select English or Spanish. We're doing live translations for the event. So I want to make sure everyone is included uh, for, for this work. Uh, bienvenidos para las personas que nos acaban de acompañar. Welcome all. For everyone who has just joined, we have interpretation available in English and in Spanish. You can see a globe icon that says interpretation on the lower part of the screen. Click there and click the language you would like to participate in. If you're in your mobile phone, you, you will see three dots. Select that language interpretation and the language you'd wish to participate in. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jose Eduardo. Um, again, my name is Katie Coyne. I'm uh, the project manager for this project on behalf of the consultant team uh, and also for Robinson, where I work. I just wanted to take a really brief moment to recap uh, what is included in this plan. Um, obviously, if you're here, you know where Precinct 2 is. Um, just really briefly, eastern side of Harris County, uh, you have over a, hundred, uh, over a million uh, people living in Precinct 2, uh, almost a quarter of the population of Harris County. The Parks and Trails Plan uh, is something that has been recently posted on the website. Uh, well, I'll, I'll ask one of my colleagues to post a link to the website so that y'all can access the full plan, the full design guidelines document. I'll talk about that in just a moment as well as all the appendices uh, that uh, have all the background data and all the extra resources if you really want to dig into the details of this plan. Those are all posted on the website for y'all to check out in more detail. The first thing that you'll see in this plan, uh, once you get through the table of contents and some of the letters uh, of support from Commissioner Garcia and Mr. Sadler, uh, your parks director for the precinct, is our executive summary. This is really gonna walk you through at a high level what's in this plan. It describes that this parks and trails plan is a long-term vision and a near-term plan for priority investments in parks and trails. It's a, a, a report but also a set of guidelines for Precinct 2 and Precinct 2's partners. There are key near-term priorities for the next five years, um, standards and guidelines that will carry staff well into the future, and we're working at multiple different scales. So we have some uh, projects identified that might be at a single park scale, somewhere we're looking at a neighborhood scale, and somewhere we're looking precinct-wide at where there are gaps that we are recommending to be filled. The first uh, chapter beyond the executive summary is the state of the outdoors. If you've been plugged in throughout the project, this is basically our existing conditions document. This describes what exists on the ground right now, increasing to. This really created a baseline of data for all of our decision making as we started to get into the rest of the plan and actually making recommendations. It goes through the history of the precinct, the demographics, uh, we also did a suitability analysis to understand uh, if we dig into a lot of different types of data, where uh, 
are the places in precinct two that are the most vulnerable and most in need of parks investments. Uh, we also did in park park assessments uh, for every single existing park in precinct two. So this was where we had two of our staff go out to every single park and, uh, and record data on the quality of infrastructure in parks so that we can understand what parks need uh, to have more investments and which parks are actually functioning really well already from a facilities perspective. And based on Commissioner Garcia's uh, intro, you know that you already have some amazing parks assets in Precinct 2. Uh, this also was a part of the project where we were really, really looking for community input. Uh, and we had a survey, online mapping, and multiple public events at this phase. Uh, where we're really hearing uh, and beginning to listen about what your priorities are for the Parks and Trails plan. So let me dig into engagement. So this is our third chapter of the plan. We had 24 focus groups, two virtual community events. We had two interactive mapping uh, opportunities that were posted online for y'all to provide feedback. We had three walking tours out in parks in the community. And we also had five weeks of social media and yard sign campaign posts trying to prompt uh, residents and other community members to give feedback. We also had over 900 responses to the community survey in both Spanish and English. Uh, we also heard in terms of your highest priorities, we, we heard a lot about some of the basic amenities that, that y'all wanted to see. So things like cleaner restrooms, better maintained drinking fountains, and also that trails are a really high priority for residents in precinct too. When we dig in a little bit more to some of those de desired amenities, we heard that uh, we y'all wanted more paved pathways and more biking trails, but also more unpaved trails, some of those opportunities to connect with nature, uh, as well as more lighting for, uh, for fields and courts to really increase your ability to use those at different times of day uh, with you and your family. When we looked at accessibility, uh, you're already doing amazing work in Precinct 2 around creating inclusive parks and trails assets. This was a, a key item that we really wanted to get feedback on in terms of accessibility, though, for this plan. Uh, the highest response uh, for accessibility priorities had to do with accessible sidewalks, walking paths, and trails. Uh, the top 10 include things like more ramps, uh, restroom quality, uh, improved park infrastructure and equipment that's more inclusive, uh, more parking, uh, more activities and programming, so maybe not the physical infrastructure, but actually the activation and the programming that happens in the park for uh, folks of all different needs. And then we also found some really interesting feedback about other desired amenities. So uh, through our focus groups, interviews, and engagement events, uh, we also heard that trail markers are, are something that are really important, not just for uh, how, how folks uh, enjoy a park, but also because uh, they make people feel safe. Uh, they make people feel like they can locate themselves in an emergency situation. And so making sure that people feel safe is critical to making sure that people can enjoy parks in Precinct 2. We also heard that for certain communities, especially LGBTQ plus and Latinx communities, it was important for folks to feel like they were welcome in parks and to see representation of those different cultures within parks. Uh, and some of that might come through more public art that really re represents the diverse cultures of people in Precinct 2. Some other desired amenities include uh, some items related to programming, so not just what gets built, but what happens in a park. Farmers markets and vendors were something that people got really excited about. Uh, programming, making sure that we're thinking about programming for all ages and cultures and that it's in various languages. So you can go with your kids and your grandparents all to the park and have experiences that are enjoyable for your whole family together. We heard a lot about more trees, especially as it relates to heat reduction. Uh, and I think heat is something that Harris County is going to have to continue to deal with more and more uh, over the years. And so the more we can plant trees and create other shade, uh, the more people are going to enjoy parks in Precinct 2. Uh, we heard a little bit more about evening programming, uh, movies at the park, and, and other types of programming uh, in, in the evenings, especially uh, when you're in hotter seasons. Uh, more about safety, 
uh, more about educational signage and spaces. How can you go to a park and learn more about the nature of your park or the surrounding culture of the, the communities and neighborhoods, uh, as well as more health uh, and educational program for people of all ages. The next chapter dives into the goals and objectives. So all of that engagement feedback, all of the work that went into the State of the Outdoors report, all went into developing seven goals and objectives. So a goal is really the foundational values that are gonna drive this plan. And the objectives get in a little bit more into the weeds on how we're gonna achieve those goals. Uh, so again, created after all of the extensive analysis and engagement work that we've done, and really a path toward parks and open space management that can nurture inclusivity and increase access for all, and also increases the longevity uh, of, of your parks and trail system uh, through strong networks of care across the precinct, regardless of the scale of those investments or the location. So like I said, there are seven goals. I'm gonna dive really briefly into each of them. So the first one is safe. We heard that y'all want to make sure that you have at the foundation safe parks, places where you feel safe being. Some of the uh, objectives in these sections talk about signage and wayfinding, making sure that you understand where you are in a park, uh, maintenance and lighting. So making sure that you have visibility uh, and that there aren't places where you feel unsafe because there isn't enough visibility either through lighting or through clearing vegetation. Uh, pedestrian and bike safety, as well as safety and health related programming. Number two, accessible and connected. This is where we wanna make sure that we increase access and connectivity to parks and trails throughout the precincts. Again, we're talking a little bit about signage here and that ties in with some of our safety goals. And that's just maybe a good time to even mention that uh, a lot of these goals and objectives overlap and complement each other. We're also talking about accessibility to and within parks. So we're not just saying you need to be able to move through a park a certain way. You also need to be able to get to a park uh, in an accessible way. Uh, so that connectivity between parks is also a key piece. Number three, healthy. We wanna create spaces that promote an active and holistically healthy lifestyle. So how can we provide more fitness uh, equipment, fitness programming and other ways that you can engage in your physical health uh, but also, how can we think about how parks can help to mitigate any kind of exposure that many folks in the region have historically uh, had to environmental risks, industrial risks, etc. Uh, and so really thinking about how parks can help to mitigate and also limit exposure to any kind of environmental harm. And then we're also thinking about health from a mental health perspective. Science says that more time you spend in nature uh, and, and the more time you spend with community, both have measurable impacts on reducing your anxiety and reducing your stress. So uh, thinking about ways parks can also promote mental health is a key piece of this goal. So we also think about parks as community uh, health resource hubs. This ties into that mental health piece. How can these spaces be hubs for resources for community? as sites for youth leadership so that we can bring up a new generation of stewards in our community. Uh, and also in really thinking about how we can stop the spread of COVID uh, as well as uh, lean into these assets as really critical pieces of our community that we've used even more during the pandemic. Number four, culturally relevant. We wanna make sure that there isn't a one size fits all approach to every single park in every single community in precinct two. This is in recognition that there are different cultures and there is diversity in the precinct and that uh, your workforce, the type of programming used in parks needs to be unique to the communities that you're trying to reach. Five, engaging. This is where we wanna make sure that just because you create the physical infrastructure of a park, we wanna make sure that there's programming and other opportunities to actually engage in uh, connecting with community and connecting with nature uh, in that park. And so whether that's sports programming, uh, music, opportunities for older adults and seniors or youth, uh, as well as providing really clear uh, and, and different ways of communicating and marketing the different resources and resources. Mm -hmm. 
So a few different ways that we're talking about doing this beyond amenities, really thinking about how we continue to engage virtually uh, and, and make sure folks know what uh, also making sure that we're working with uh, our local ISP as well as continuing to engage community uh, even beyond when this plan is done. Number six, only two more goals left. Number six is environmentally resilient. So uh, you have a really a lot of special places from an environmental perspective in Precinct 2. Uh, and we want to make sure that parks are promoting that local ecology that any landscape that we're proposing you uh, implement in a park is, is adapted to that local ecology and can also be resilient as we have major storm events, as we have a major heat event, uh, as we think about changing climate conditions. So uh, some of the objectives here talk, talk about how we're going to cre create parks that help us protect and restore, uh, mitigate the impact of climate, how parks can help us be more flood resilient uh, and how we can work with community to do that. Last but not least, economically resilient. This is foundational to everything else functioning for the park system. So we wanna make sure that there are adequate financial and volunteer resources to support the park system and trail system in precinct two. So we were thinking about how we can make sure that we have the right balance of effort on maintenance to make sure that you have a very, very well-maintained park system and we're not burdening our, our maintenance teams. Uh, we're thinking about also how we can bring in volunteerism and school partnerships and helping to steward exceptional parks assets. Uh, we wanna also make sure that um, we're looking at op opportunities for visitor spending. So who's coming for sporting events, et cetera, into the precinct uh, and earn income as opportunities to think about net positive uh, from an economically resilient perspective. Okay, so those are the, the goals and objectives. Now I'm gonna get into specific recommendations for the system as a whole, and then I'm gonna get into recommendations for specific parts. So this first section, what we're looking at is areas that might need more parks assets that, um, sorry, that, uh, that might need more parks assets that uh, don't currently have enough or could use more or need different facilities. And so what we did was an assessment of all vacant land in the entire precinct. Uh, we looked very specifically at public land partners that might have vacant land that maybe is not currently in precinct or county ownership, uh, who might potentially partner with the precinct in the future to turn underutilized land into new, a new park asset. Uh, we found that there are 22,000 acres of vacant land, both public and private, in Precinct 2, and that almost 4,900 acres are with, within high vulnerability communities and almost 2,500 within very high vulnerability communities. And this is a, a time for me to remind y'all, as a part of that early analysis, we looked at vulnerability. Um, and so that's, that's what this is referring to. In terms of trails and bike connections, this is the chapter where we're really digging into these as well. These are these opportunities to connect parks and other community assets throughout, throughout the region. Uh, and the way that these priority bikeways and trails projects that we outlined in the plan uh, were selected was based on six prioritization criteria. So we looked at uh, the Vision Zero high injury network. We looked at park access, school access, transit access, a community health index store, score, excuse me, and a social vulnerability index. Uh, so really trying to understand the full ecosystem of all the different factors that should inform where new trails investments should be. They, uh, the recommendations in this section are broken up into two different categories, short-term projects and long-term projects. So the short-term projects might be a lighter intervention, such as like a retrofit of, of an existing street, something that isn't going to need uh, a, a major investment, like a bridge, for instance. And then the long-term projects might need a greater intervention. This might be a complete street reconstruction, some sort of major trail project, might require some significant investment, for instance, uh, drainage infrastructure or some sort of grade-separated crossing. And so you'll see that projects are, are grouped in these two categories. 
Next up, in the plan document, you'll find a chapter called Design Guidelines. This is a summary chapter of a much larger, much more detailed design guidelines document that you'll find a separate link for on the project website. That design guidelines standalone document is meant to be used uh, by anyone who wants to dig into it, but also specifically by um, the parks director, Chris Sadler, his staff, and any future uh, consultants who are gonna be doing design work in the precinct. The goal of the design guidelines is really to be a toolkit for the precinct parks and recreation staff to operate, maintain, and expand neighborhood services. And this is where we go from those high level goals, those starting to get into the weeds objectives, all the way into, okay, how do you actually do this work on the ground? It's broken up into four sections, cohesive and comfortable, community focused, active and resilient and vibrant. So I'll go through each of those sections really briefly. Community focus is less about the physical infrastructure and facilities in a park, and more about some of the cultural programming that can bring communities together. So this is where we dive into a little bit more of the details of how you can actually uh, create programming that, that makes, makes parks sources of economic development. How can you really create uh, food truck event markets and concessions? Resilient and vibrant really gets into some of the environmental resilience goals. And this is where we provide uh, design guidance on how the precinct can include native plantings, green infrastructure, flood resilience measures, restoration of local ec ecology and community health, uh, sustainable stormwater management. This is where we dive into some of those details um, uh, for, for the precinct. Cohesive and comfortable. This is where we're looking at uh, some of the physical infrastructure. So some of the classic things that you think of as park assets, things like benches, shade structures, your trash cans, site furnishings, uh, benches, um, picnic tables. And you know, part of what we're trying to do here is make sure that when you're in a precinct two park, you know you're in a precinct two park. You have a cohesive uh, aesthetic, a cohesive feel, a cohesive look to uh, the way these furnishings look throughout precinct. And last but not least, active. So this is where we're thinking about ways that people can be active, uh, ways that parks can be accessible and connected throughout the precinct. And so this is where we're talking about some of the inclusive features that might exist within a park. We're also talking about uh, design guidelines, standard widths, uh, standard um, uh, paving surfaces and things like that for trails, as well as guidelines for connecting to neighborhoods. Uh, and then the last major chapter of the plan is the case studies chapter. And so we've gone from a big analysis in our State of the Outdoors report. Uh, we've done extensive engagement. We've created these high level goals and objectives to really guide the precinct for years to come. Uh, we've started to dive into trails recommendations, potential acquisition or uh, partnerships to create new parks in places that need it. And the case studies are really an opportunity to pull all of that together, use the design guidelines for how you can actually design, physically design new parks based on your goals and actually do that in a specific place. So in the case studies chapter, we chose five case studies to demonstrate how all of those things come together in a single place. So we looked at Hall's Bayou Hike and Bike Trail, a section of it, North Shore Park, Channel View Sports Complex, James Butte, and Dad's Club Sports Complex. So Hall's Bayou, in our suitability analysis, which I've already talked about a little bit, it's one of the metrics that we use to decide priority for investments. This was uh, ranked number four. It's very high priority. Uh, and some of the things that came out of that early analysis were that in this census block group, the data said that there was low social cohesion, low physical health, high rates of chronic illness, and that the area has some poor air quality issues and is located near an interstate. And so these are some of the factors that we think about when we think about design. There are, uh, so this is the section of Halls Bayou Hike and Bike Trail that, that we looked at. Um, from around Shady Lane Park uh, to Keith Weiss Park. Uh, 
Uh, we looked at some connections to, for instance, James Driver Park uh, around uh, along Poey Street, um, as well as other potential connections at a neighborhood scale. But I'm going to zoom into these three boxes that you can see here on the left of this image. So I'm going to start with uh, A, move to B, and then go to C. This is where we really started to dive into more. So this is Breckshire Park. It was the furthest to the left. We're thinking about really how we can maximize opportunities for uh, things like flex space where there's this open lawn. So you could have a pickup soccer game. You could go have a picnic with your family. Uh, there are three proposed picnic pavilions, a crosswalk to make sure there's safe access to that por portion of the park here, as well as a little bit further uh, along the park on this end. We're talking about making sure that there's supportive in infrastructure like benches, that we're thinking about making sure that there's native vegetation as a key part of, especially along the edge of this park as you get a little bit closer to that bayou so that we can promote that local ecology. Uh, and then we're also, especially around this end of the park, uh, thinking about uh, opportunities to bring in food trucks, create open air markets, and really respond to some of those uh, requests from community for more activation uh, and also economic opportunities for community members uh, to engage in parks. The second one is Mary Withers Park. So this is the, the middle part of those enlargements. This is a little bit of a lighter touch. There's some really fantastic forested areas that already exist in this part of the park. And what we're really trying to do is provide access to those areas uh, for folks to really be able to connect with nature. So first of all, uh, we've got a trailhead access uh, at the top of this image. We've got an overlook uh, so that you can really see uh, how these, these two waterways come together uh, in the middle of this. Um, we're looking also at bank stabilization so we can restore some of the, the ecology of this part of the bayou. And then the existing forest area at the bottom of the screen is something that we see as a huge asset. So we've uh, recommended some selective clearing to provide uh, a little bit more of an open forested area in the middle, as well as some trails that go through the forest there. Another key piece is uh, some pedestrian crossings that exist to make sure that folks feel connected across some of these different waterways as they converge. Pinewood Village Park is, is the smallest part of, of, of this that we really uh, looked into. So you can see the enlargement of some of those pedestrian bridges that I showed you in the previous. This is where we're also recommending the development of a playground picnic area, uh, as well as some fencing to make sure that we have safe um, uh, accessibility to the uh, south. Uh, this is also where we're recommending both a traditional playground structure, but also an adventure or nature play area. Really seeing this, uh, this section of Halls Bayou as this opportunity to both gather with family and have traditional park experiences, but also connect with nature. Next up, we've got Channel View Sports Complex. This uh, ranked number nine in our suitability analysis, still really high in our priorities. And uh, we wanted to choose this because it was in a block group that had, uh, in terms of the data, high chronic illness. We also, in our park assessment of Channel View, noted that there was very little tree canopy that existed in this park. So that means there's a lot of areas that feel really hot in Channel View. Uh, there's also some areas that have had some soil erode. Um, and that, you know, currently it has moderate walking access. So that's something to build upon. So there's some existing infrastructure that you'll see as the satellite image in the back, these ball fields, which is fantastic. And that's really what we're building upon here. Uh, right now we're recommending uh, for parking areas to be permeable to make sure that we still keep that, uh, that function in terms of water being able to get into the ground. We're actually proposing some green infrastructure features like rain gardens, as well as tree buffer areas that are going to help cool off some areas of the park. And you see trees interspersed throughout this park. Uh, some of the areas uh, toward the front of the park, um, sorry, toward, toward the back of the park, um, are a little bit underutilized. And we see those as real opportunities to, to create open lawn that can be used as flex space, create more picnic areas so that as uh, you're there with your family, uh, you can picnic uh, in between your, your child's games, 
Uh, you can also potentially uh, have maybe your younger kids go to this adventure play area that's immediately adjacent to the fields, and you can have this entire family experience at Channel View. James Butte is uh, rank number 24. It was in a block group that had very high chronic illness, uh, very low mental health, and high risk factors, very low social cohesion. It's also a complex that experiences very low educational stability. So this is a really interesting one. Uh, there were some historic streets that went through this area and there's some strong neighborhood history here that um, had been erased at, at some point in, in the past. And so we looked at uh, providing these two, um, uh, not, not drivable, uh, but two uh, connections through the park uh, that would be uh, closed off at most times. Um, so, First of all, we've got an open lawn to the left. Again, some flex space. We've got a decomposed granite path uh, for walkway. We've got opportunities for picnicking. We're also making sure that we're acknowledging the history of this place. So really thinking about how we can acknowledge these historic streets that were a part of, uh, of James Butte in the past before it was what it is now, and also markers to acknowledge that history. Uh, we're also talking about, because this is where it is on Buffalo Bayou, uh, a kayak launch. This is uh, a key piece of, of how we can connect to the water and to nature. Uh, looking at also promoting some local ecology by um, increasing that vegetative buffer, planting more plants, planting more trees, uh, as well as we really see this as an opportunity to engage in um, public art that really recognizes the local culture and history of this place. Dad's Club Sports Complex is ranked number 38 in analysis. Some of the things that we found in the data um, is that you know, folks may struggle with mental health in this tract. Uh, it's a census tract with low cohesion. Uh, it also had uh, low erosion and contamination, but high urban heat uh, and moderate park access. So, this is a pretty big one. You can see some of the existing facilities that, that are already here, um, some fields that already exist, uh, both flex fields that are used predominantly for soccer as well as uh, baseball, baseball fields. Um, so right now we're, we're recommending um, some more drainage features uh, to help with some drainage issues that exist in this park, some vegetated swales along uh, the top margin of the park here, um, more permeable surfaces to make sure water can infiltrate in the ground, into the ground, uh, and then more um, formal trails uh, throughout this park, uh, whether boardwalk or pedestrian trails, uh, as well as uh, picnic areas, an adventure play area, and, um, and shade structures. So uh, thank you so much for being with us tonight. It's been an honor to, to work with the precinct, to work with the engineering staff, and I'm uh, privilege to be the person to hand this back to Commissioner Garcia to answer any questions and talk about next steps. Thank you, Katie. I'm actually going to jump in here for a second. Um, I was wondering if we could go um, over um, how to make reservations on our parks. Uh, I believe it's uh, back on slide 23, and we have uh, Chris Sadler, our parks director here, um, to, to show us uh, a little bit of that. Let me just get to that uh, slide and then I'll, I'll screen share it. Sounds good. Perfect. Thank you, Jorge. Uh, thank you everybody for coming out tonight. And uh, we, a year ago, uh, commissioner launched a new reservation software. Before all of our reservations were done, uh, by Excel spreadsheets or in person. So if you wanted to make a reservation, you would actually have to travel to uh, one of our locations or offices to make an in-person uh, reservation. Now we have the new recreation software called Civic Rec, where it allows you to book all of our facilities online or make a uh, reservation for a program that is now being offered in our parks and our community centers. And below we have uh, added the link that you can go to that has a catalog, you can make an account, it's free, there's no charge for that. Um, once you're in there, you can see all of our facilities that we offer uh, from ball fields to rental pavilions to community centers. 
while you're there, you can see every program that is being offered by the precinct from our communities, uh, community centers and program division uh, for all of our parks, veterans, health services, uh, food drives. All of our programs live in this uh, software and, uh, and it's updated daily. Um, and there's a lot of information that you can learn about the precinct and what's going on in the precinct. And then on the next slide. The next slide is our brand new Civic Engage Neighborhood Service um, website that has just launched about a week ago. And so I know somebody in the, in the chat asked, is there maps? This is your location you would go to. When you go to the commissioner's main uh, page, you'll click on Neighborhood Services. It's gonna take you to this website. All the park maps, uh, facilities, um, everything is located here now. You can uh, put a service request in, you can do a reservation. Um, this has all of it. We uh, have a community uh, section. So if I wanna know what's going on in my community, uh, say Baytown or Barrett, you can click on the community liaison and it has a calendar that shows you everything that's going on in your community. If you don't live in those communities and you wanna know what's going on, you may work in that community or have family that lives in that community. It all lives on this page and it's updated. It gives you all your contact information for your liaisons for your communities, your zone managers, your community center managers, our neighborhood service senior director, Jose Jimenez's information is there. Um, so it's our brand new website. We're very excited about it and it's very fluent. So we'll keep continuously updating it daily. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> and I wanted to make sure you got that. I wanted to make sure that everybody got an insight to Civic Rec because, again, as uh, Chris laid out, uh, you'd have to come down to the office and make a reservation. Uh, and when it was done on the spreadsheet, things can change or you can uh, lose that spreadsheet. And so we want to make it transparent. We want to promote our activities and we want it uh, uh, available for everyone. It's easy through your phone. It's easy through your desktop. It's easy through your laptop. Uh, so again, please uh, save this uh, URL. And whenever you want to make a reservation and save uh, part of the park, it's all right here. So thank you, Chris. Thank you for that insight. So now I guess Jorge, we're ready for some q and Is that where we're at? And Katie, thank you for going through that. That was phenomenal. Really, really appreciate all the work you and your team have been doing to uh, help us to get to this point. And uh, I wanted to make sure that I, I remembered that uh, one park that we didn't talk about is uh, our Veterans Memorial Park. It's a partnership park that we have with the city of Houston. I actually work, uh, actually beg to get this park from the city. The city still owns it, but I am managing and, and, uh, and my team is working on it um, because I helped to bring this park to life when I was on Houston City Council. And unfortunately it hadn't gotten a whole lot of love and attention since then. And uh, I wanna do something transformative to honor our military veterans. And so I beg for that park, it will now be getting uh, a lot of our attention and hopefully in the near future it'll get uh, as uh, awe and, 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 and awesome and, and phenomenal as James Driver, but it will be in honor of our um, retired, active, and past military veterans. I want to honor them all and our women uh, who've all served in the military. I want to make sure to honor them. And so, but just to remind uh, folks about that particular park, that's a special one as well. All righty. So uh, let's see what questions we got here. Um, let's see. You know, uh, uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, Commissioner, uh, we, we do have a hand raise. It looks like. Oh, okay. Brian okay. Okay. Us. All righty. Uh, Brian. Well, Commissioner Garcia, how are you? Wonderful, good to see you. Good to see you too. So I, I think you guys did an amazing job. Literally every concern I had was addressed. 
The only one question I have, it's it's kind of how to make sure that the home values in these areas that you're making these parks at don't go up significantly where the people that live there can't live there anymore and uh, you know don't raise the taxes too much. Just and kind no, of how do you how do you make sure that works? Well, first of all, um, I'm proud of the fact that I've done two things since I've been on commissioner's court. One is you've gotten the third consecutive consecutive property tax reduction in the first in about 15 years, I believe. Secondly, I have uh, increased senior and disabled uh, homestead exemptions, also the first that Harris County has seen in about a decade. And so um, the way we, we uh, continue to keep the community affordable is by making sure we're bringing you know, better paying jobs into the area and then uh, do our work to, you know, balance the budget and, and cut what we can. Uh, and we're doing that. That's how I've been able to bring those property tax reductions uh, to you. As, and, but, you know, but by the same token, uh, I think that these uh, projects will be transformative, but not gentrifying in nature. And that's why I directed my team to create a program called Revive to Thrive. And that's where we're revitalizing the communities, we're investing in them. And, uh, and these are neighborhoods that have people who uh, have long lived in them. And in all likelihood, many have their, their senior homestead exemption already. And so uh, there's not uh, too much fear in that regard. But until Brian, I can, I can do something with the uh, Harris County Appraisal District, which I have no control over, um, we won't have any real change in that. So please reach out to your state reps to implore them to give HCAC, uh, the Houston, uh, uh, the Harris County Appraisal District, uh, much needed attention and reform. That's where the real focus of your concern lies. But I appreciate that. Thank you, Brian. All righty. Alex, Alex Bikes, you're going to invite me on a bike ride, right, Alex? Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I do host Northline Rides every two weeks at a shop that I know of. Um, he's, you know, lends me the parking space and uh, it's at Fulton at Tidwell. So next week I'll, I'll do it again. And I ride Good. to Keith Place and I use the Halls Bayou to get up there. Um, and I also go to um, all the way into East and all the way to Lay Road and use the trails down there to get up there from Hirsch. So I, I, I use those exploratory rides to get people to more familiar with um, riding in the area and, you know, using the trails that not be, like you mentioned earlier, like the east side is not really known for trails, but we already have that established already. So I want to promote that. And that's why I've been doing those rides. Good. Uh, but my, sure my point, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next weekend or next week, uh, Thursday is when I start up. I, I start. Uh, the, the, it's the next ride. Um, but my question was about I attended the halls by you. Um, meeting like a couple months back and I asked them uh, on the section B of the map that they were just presenting by Katie. Um, there's a really big chunk of forest there. And I was asking like, who is the owner of that property? Because I mean, it's heavily wooded and it's like behind the Fiesta and um, um, big part of the you know neighborhood. And there's some little dumping on the opposite side, like, like on the Fiesta side, but you know, it's been empty for a while and it's heavily wooded. So, um, you know, it'd be nice to turn all that stuff into like a wooded trail, you know, for pedestrians or, you know, maybe squeeze around a mountain, a little mountain bike trail or whatever. Um, but, you know, it's just another amenity, like, like it was mentioned, like the little piece of wooded area was an asset. So mm -hmm. having a bigger asset would be awesome. Right, right. Thank you for that, Alex. And Jorge, we're keeping track of uh, these uh, questions that come up. This is a, a good one. And, uh, and Alex, I'm always looking for ways to add trail space, especially that, that makes sense. I want to also remind everybody that we do have a uh, efforts underway to inventory all of the center point right away so that we can create um, uh, bike, uh, hike and bike trail uh, highways, if you will, and, uh, and connect significant parts of our community together. Uh, so we've got that underway as well. So um, but I, but definitely we'll, we'll keep that in mind and we'll track your question and we'll go take a look at it, investigate it, 
And who knows, we might fall into another opportunity like uh, Van Zant. All righty, let's see. Pastor Deb, you got your hand up. Good Come evening, on. Commissioner. Hey and there. thank you for this lovely presentation. And Katie was fantastic. She was. I wanted to let you know uh, that we know that we're in the city, so we don't hold you to account uh, for all of our issues here, but we are a parks desert. And mm -hmm. I called your office and told them with <clears throat> Stella Morellis that if we can't get a park, we'll get recreation. And we now have partnership with Luis Garcia and they're working with us to get us a circulator and maybe some buses yeah. to get the children and the seniors um, out of this parks desert um, somewhere. So I wanted to thank you for your staff, for Jorge um, and for Jose Menes and uh, all the staff that you have. Selena has been here to the church. Yeah. Um, we're in our fifth year of the Northline Community Revival Coalition and January Advisors is gonna put out our presentation as we launch Super Neighborhood 45, 60,000 unheard voices and choices in Northline that is the same territory as Go Neighborhood Northline. That's right. And LISC is gonna work with us. And next year, we're gonna do quarterly events at some of the shopping centers and churches and uh, put out the stuff. And, and we want a place to grow food here. Prairie View A&M, James Peaches, is ready, but people are buying land up over here, up and down airline, old trailer parks and throwing people out. And these people, because they're holding land till they see what else is being built, they don't wanna let Prairie View come over here and plant us a farm. We could have a food stamp farm where people could double their food stamps. So we need your help with sustainability and food insecurity, because we tried to get the food bank for our trunk and treat, and everybody threw up their hands and said, well, you need a partner. We're a small Quaker outpost with 27 people with no park and our spark park closed. We meet in the street. We have Zelma meets in the street once a month. I wanna have you out here. We had Sylvia Garcia for neighbor night out. So I wanna see precinct two at night outs meet in the street. And we wanna get you talking to some of these people about getting us some land to farm and pray for us that we can get all this done. Our children, play in the street and we have no place to recreate. So thank you for your dedication. You are a district age. You know the heart here, you know the need. I won't go into it. Thank you and bless you. <laughs> God bless you, Pastor. And thank you for everything. And I'll, I'll make a deal with you. You pray for me, I'll pray for you. Uh, but pray for all of us as well. But I'll, I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you what, um, uh, I, I really appreciate uh, you bringing up park deserts. We talk about all other kinds of deserts, whether it's a medical uh, health care desert or whether it's a food and security desert. Um, uh, but I appreciate you bringing attention to the fact that we need parks uh, in uh, areas. And, and you know what I'll do is, um, Jorge, if you will uh, remind me to uh, let's do an inventory of the Northline area to see if by chance we have any county property in that area that may be unused and see if we can't uh, replicate the relationship that we have with uh, 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 Finca Tres Robles uh, in the East End. Uh, they're a farmer's market. They're growing a phenomenal produce uh, there in the area and their commitment is to keep that produce uh, within a five mile area of their uh, farm there. And so uh, let's see, if we can't uh, create some synergy with them, uh, but let's try and do an inventory to see whether we have any county property. And Deb, uh, Pastor, that's, that's uh, the, the strategy I have to work with. I, I can do a lot of things when I have uh, county assets but when I don't, then I have to work with what the city's got to offer, and they don't necessarily have a whole lot to offer on many occasions. Uh, so we'll we'll look at it, and we'll we'll circle back with you, and uh, just let me know where the next super neighborhood meeting is, and I'll be happy to show up yet again. So good to see you. Thank you, you so much. It'll be the twenty first. Um, I'll let you know. I'll put out an email because we have to wait and see. We were supposed to have one tonight, but we had this meeting here, so. We're going to put that off towards until the end of the year and get all this business carried through and we'll let you know. And thank you so much for listening to Northline.
You got it. Thank you so much. And I know your name isn't iPhone. Uh, I, I doubt anybody, I, I doubt your parents named you iPhone, but uh, go ahead, uh, Madam <laughs> <Yeah>. iPhone. <laughs> no, you're, you're muted, you're muted. iPhone, you're muted. There you go. Nope, not iPhone. This is Nancy O'Hara out in the port. Hey, Thank Nancy. You. What's up? Thank you for all you do. You're welcome. Good to see you. Council yeah. member, council member, Nancy Ojeda out of Laporte, the city of Laporte. So council member, the honorable, thank you for joining us. Thank you. We are a public art desert. Mm. We are a public art desert besides not having a Starbucks. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it has literally taken me four years, four years of relentlessly pursuing art to finally, about a month ago, getting four electric boxes painted. That, that's it, that's all we got. Um, I, feel, I feel halfway bad. I know that there's other people who have much, much more important needs such as the North Line area and I respect that. But if we could ever get some public art, children's interactive art, anything like that at Southern Beach, it'd be great. Got it, uh, Council Member. Thank you for that. And listen, uh, you're talking to a um, former, or better yet, a recovering artist. I, when I was in elementary school, I actually won an art contest that landed me for five consecutive years studying at the School of Fine Arts. And so, uh, and then just this weekend, we unveiled a beautiful mural in the north side uh, that was done by the uh, north side management district uh, and and the artist uh, gelson for that uh, mural said something uh, that as an old policeman it also caught my attention he says it's such an honor to do this mural because i used to tag out here when i was a kid and uh so, but but you you make a, you make a good point and uh and you're absolutely right Harris County, county government has had zero attention and commitment to public art. And, uh, and that is something that my colleagues and I are, as we balance through all of these uh, challenging uh, times and things that we're in the middle of, how to bring that uh, to, uh, uh, to the surface. It's valuable, it's economic, uh, or I, sh I should say it's economy, because it creates jobs, uh, it, it, it improves uh, the quality of life, uh, it, it, is, uh, it creates jobs for those who are starving artists and, and, uh, and it creates opportunity. So I, I'm a believer, you got me at hello. And uh, so you have my commitment, we're actually working on this. Don't have much to report because we got to figure out how to fund some of this, but we're working on it. So thank you, Nancy. Thank you, council member. All righty. Who else has got a hand up or Jorge? What? Oh, uh, now I know your name is not Iowa. Yes, sir. Uh, it, it's, I got I-H-W-A. Living Hope Wheelchair Association, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, yes, sir. sir. Good to see you. Go ahead. You're unmuted. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Gusto verlo. Hi, Mike. Good afternoon. How are you, Commissioner? Well, well, thank you. Well, it, I'm very proud and it's an honor to be here representing my colleagues. I'm here with Chewy. We're very excited that we're having improvements done on the parks. And we really appreciate the chance that was given to us with disabilities. And we're glad to be representatives of this association and glad to be a part of this. And I just wanted to say something and say that these parks were just not designed for people in wheelchairs. And many times my partners went to parks and we couldn't even get close to the tables to eat. It's like they, they, they would put us in a corner, but you were still away from the table. So there were some of the points that we brought up that those tables, we wanted people to be able to go in in their wheelchairs and eat. 
and for there to be devices to exercise, you know, for people who are in wheelchairs as well. And to change like the shelters where you wait for the metro, there's like a, a bench that's like halfway across and your feet get wet when it rains. And also to put playgrounds for disabled children in wheelchairs. And one thing that we also asked for is the restrooms. There's always just one restroom for disabled people, you know, in parks and even public places. If we could have two, I know that sometimes we, we can't make everything happen, but that was part of the petition that we added in terms of what our orga organization is, and it's close to 200 people in wheelchairs. And I'm very appreciative that our voice was heard. And we hope that we have put a grain of sand there so that this city gets better every time. And with the leadership of the Commissioner Garcia, because realistically he's done a great job and we really appreciate that we're always included in a lot of the work that you all do. Thank you, thank you. He was sharing how grateful he is that we're paying attention to um, uh, to members of our community who are disabled. He's excited that uh, we're adding amenities uh, for those that are uh, in wheelchairs and uh, that he visits the parks often and doesn't have, can't use his wheelchair. Even uh, the benches to uh, eat don't uh, allow for wheelchair accessibility. And so these are some of the details that we have paid attention to as we put uh, James Driver uh, to, uh, to, to, to the drawing board. And, uh, and he's just grateful for that. And we will continue. Vamos a seguir, seguir haciéndolo y le damos so we'll keep doing this and we will give you a great welcome when this is over. To be unveiled and hopefully you'll be able to enjoy it. Y espero que lo va a disfrutar igualmente. Así que gracias a usted. All righty, uh, I think I see Stephanie. Hello, good evening, Commissioner good evening. Garcia. Thank you so much. This has been a really informative presentation and, and there's so many good things coming down the pike. One of the questions I wanted to ask you is, um, you know, I, I do a lot of work around energy and, and the environment and um, uh, electric vehicles are becoming more and more popular. You know, people are choosing them because they're, uh, less polluting and um, you know they're going to be much much more available over the next 10 to 15 years for you know for for everyone and um, and there's even some auto manufacturers who are going to stop making regular kinds of cars and so one of the questions I have for you is um, will uh, precinct 2 think about putting electric vehicle chargers in any of the parks Stephanie absolutely. And let me just tell you um, a couple of things. Number one, and I'm, you guys are getting it exclusive. So don't tell anybody. Top secret. Everybody raise your hands and promise oath of uh, silence. Uh, you can't tell anybody. But Stephanie, here's, here's the reality. Since I became commissioner, I've been working on uh, figuring better ways for the county to purchase clean energy. And there were some obstacles in the way, so we dealt with those. Um, we have just, in this very last uh, commissioner's court meeting, um, hired our consultants to help guide our clean energy purchasing and a second consultant to help us in the further development of clean energy strategies, coupled with the fact that almost the entire public, uh, not public, but pollution control department are now equipped with electric vehicles. Go figure, if we got a pollution control department, we got to do our own bit of controlling pollution. And, uh, and now we will be, that other consultant will help, in a, will help us in laying out the strategy for creating charging stations around Harris County, but Precinct 2 in particular. Precinct 2 is the energy capital of the country. 
and I want to make it the in the clean energy capital of the country. We're all we're still going to have fossil fuels. I I I, I I'm not going to get on a solar powered airplane. I'm sorry, uh, but we're still going to need fossil fuel. <laughs> but in the meantime, we've got a number of varying strategies to help us uh, do our reach our clean energy and clean uh, environments uh, strategies and goals much more effectively. So I'm excited uh, that I am at the tip of the spear of that, and we're going to continue to do more. So the short answer is absolutely yes, and we're doing it right now. Great. Thank you. That's all very exciting news. Good. And my lips are sealed. You, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. All righty. Uh, let's see. Who's up? Uh, Elia. Oh, up, up our studios there. They were the folks that helped to bring the mural to the near north side. They've helped to bring the mural of our five iconic Latinas, and they're doing more. They're working on uh, Macario Garcia and so much more. Elia, go ahead. Thank you so much, Commissioner. It's good to see you again, and thank you to the team at Asakura Robinson and Tecolote as well. They, they do great work. Um, I just wanted to ask, do you think that, it that the county would ever consider a percent for art program to help fund some of those, um, you know, public art projects that people are talking about, not just within the parks and trails, but, you know, other county um, property as well. Um, typically, you know, the city has a, a great program. It, it um, uh, you know, a lot of funding comes um, for, for public art from that program. And I think the county would greatly benefit. Um, I don't know if you can do it at a, um, you know, single precinct level, but, you know, it, it may need to be as a whole. But do you think that, you, that um, you know, the other commissioners would be, supportive of that as well? I think I know of three that are that would be supportive. Um, but the, our challenge, um, unlike the city's, is that the city in part funds its uh, public art initiative uh, through um, sales tax and the county doesn't get a sales tax. Um, and the other way that, that, they, that they, they fund it is through their capital improvement program. That we do have. And, uh, and the judge and I just announced a $50 million um, crime prevention through environmental design capital improvement program. And um, this is a great input, Elias. So I'll make sure that this gets put into our capital improvement uh, plan. And, um, and uh, so the short answer is we're absolutely going to make a commitment uh, to public art. And the, the longer answer is uh, we have, we, we won't be as fast as we could do if we had access to other streams like sales tax. Uh, so we'll have to be strategic on how we develop that, but it's going to happen. Elia, you, have, you got my word on it. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. I saw Claude. I, I think I saw Claude. No, I, I lost track of Claude. Maria, go right ahead with Link Houston. Oh. Uh, hi, Commissioner. Uh, it's Mara. Sorry. Hi, Mara. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, hi, Commissioner, and thank you for this project uh, and to the team at Asakura Robinson. Uh, I'm with Link Houston. Uh, so we're a nonprofit that advocates for equitable and robust uh, transportation network so that all people can reach opportunity. Um, so first, my question was, uh, or first, I think we should also think about this as um, everyone's experience with park, parks and trails begins as they leave their home. Mm -hmm. So is there any pot of money in the county that is coming or that is being considered to improve sidewalk infrastructure? Ah, Mara, absolutely. That is in part the 50 million that I just talked about. Uh, the judge and I recognize the value uh, that making communities uh, more, more thriving. Uh, the more good people use the communities, the more the bad people will look for other places to go. And, that, and so that is the crime prevention through environmental design. Uh, so we've got to make uh, our neighborhoods walkable. Uh, I wanna invite you over to Castlewood. That is our first Revive to Thrive community. And, uh, and so the things that we're focusing on is sidewalks, is um, uh, improved drainage, is improved uh, utility connections so that people can have 
cleaner and healthier water and uh, street lighting so that communities can uh, feel safe at, uh, at night. So, and along with street striping so that vehicles will uh, hopefully be much more mindful of, uh, of the neighborhoods that they're in. So absolutely, that is a part of our capital improvement uh, program. Sidewalks will be a big focus. Making sidewalks uh, walkable uh, or making neighborhoods walkable where sidewalks are either non-existent, which is largely in the unincorporated area of the county, and the very few that we do have in unincorporated Harris County may be in disrepair. So improving those and then potentially partnering with other municipalities like Laporte or the city of Houston to uh, put in sidewalks like I've just done in Manchester. I just put down a bunch of sidewalks in the Manchester community because uh, they didn't have any, they were in disrepair. Now they're uh, eight foot uh, sidewalks, they look beautiful. And so we're gonna continue to do more of that, but absolutely you're, 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 you're right on, uh, on the same page. Okay. Uh, thank you, because I, right right now, uh, you, you're, I'm sure you're familiar with it, but in the city of Houston, the burden is on the uh, private property owners, That's crazy. And the homeowners, uh, and we do have low income areas. Uh, so I think it's an unfair I, burden. I, I, I will and, be, I'll be very upfront <laughs> with you, Mara. I never liked that ordinance. I think that's dumb. And uh, the, one, the one of the things that we should do at Houston City Council is to repeal that ordinance uh, because you need 75% of the property owners uh, to also sign off on those petitions. And we rent a lot of homes. And so uh, it's always difficult to get that property owner to sign on. And they never do, especially when you tell them, well, you might have to pay for it someday. Yeah. Uh, so we might as well do it and do it right and be committed to it. So you're, I'm, I'm, I'm on, I'm on, on the same page with you. Okay. Thank hey, you, Commissioner. If I, if I could add to your answer, um, we also have a really neat uh, uh, projects dashboard on our website. Oh yeah, so yeah. All of our sidewalk projects that sidewalk are, and drainage and projects. Yeah. Everything that we're working on, I'm gonna drop it in the chat. Uh, Good. Know, we'll see, Good. See what. Thank, yeah. Thank you, Jorge. You'll be able to see everything we're working on and where we're doing it. It's magnificent and it's interactive. Claude, you're on, buddy. You're muted, man. I'm sorry. Uh oh, Claude, we're not hearing you, man. You're wearing a Nationals hat, though. I like it. Go Strohs. World Series. Two peak. I'm going to put my hand up. I put my hand up. Oh, Tracy, go ahead. Claude is having trouble with his microphone. Go okay, ahead, Tracy. I, have, I have three questions. I didn't know how to put my hand up on this. <laughs> you, you go uh, like this. You go like yeah, this. That's what I was like. Okay. <laughs> so, as, as a uh, veteran that has disability, the part, oh, that I, the part that I go to, I love walking it, but I use a, um, a portable oxygen tank. And so I have problems with the park. How can you like request or try to see about getting extra benches? Cause there are times along the trail that I need to sit down and, and, and there's no, there's uh, the park that I go to only has one trail. And, I, and by the time I get to it, I'm so ready to get to it because I am exhausted and my oxygen is about ready to, to to burn out. And so I have to time my walk so that I know how much my capacity of my oxygen tank will last me and also that I can take a rest. So yeah, I, I don't, didn't know how um, how you can get uh, to you guys with uh, like looking into maybe having some additional uh, things, items that could, help people with disability that's not visible. That's not a visible disability that you gotcha. see. Gotcha. So that, so I, that I, was gotcha. I love it, Tracy. And, and Tracy, first of all, thank you for your service and dedication to our country. We love our veterans. We respect our veterans. So a simple answer to you is, how do you do it? You just did it. Okay. Uh, we will pay attention to this. And uh, now, 
I can speak for me. I can't speak for the city of Houston, so I'm not sure which park is close to you. I'm at the, uh, uh, Keith Weeks, Keith Wise. Oh, Keith Wise. Oh, well, yeah. uh, that that is a that is a city park, uh, but um, I'll be sure to, uh, and it's surrounded by the county. But I'll be sure to get that over to the parks department to use. But I tell you what, if you quit using Keith Wise and come over to James Driver, which ain't too far. Well, I don't know. Where, I'm not familiar with James Driver. In Little York, Little York and 59. It's just south of uh, Keith Wise. Little York and 59? Yep. Yeah, it's over know. at uh, 10,918 Bentley. Okay. So come on over when we do the ribbon cutting, and you just might have found your brand new park. A brand new park. Yeah, okay. it's it. It's it. So, uh, but I will share this with the city of Houston to make sure that they're thinking about it. Uh, but uh, give us a shot over at James Driver. I don't, I don't mind uh, doing competition with the city of Houston <laughs> when it, when it means getting our veterans taken care of and getting good people to enjoy our park. So come on over and enjoy it. But I'll share this with the city. And then another thing I had, um, you know, even though this, this, the park that I go to, but uh, one thing I noticed is there, there's an increase of four wheelers has anybody thought about having a, some kind of park where four wheeler people, cause they're, they're destroying our streets and I'm concerned about their, their uh, uh, safety. And maybe if they could have a designated place where they could just have fun using their four wheelers mm -hmm. and be out of the harm's way. You know, I, I, it's a, that's a good point. That's why we came up with the um, mountain bike trails mm -hmm. because the Yellowbird is the first government sanctioned mountain bike trails because the mountain bike trails, like the ones at Memorial, Memorial Park, are done um, without permission. Let me just say, people who are just advocates of mountain biking, they just find them trail and then they come back and they beat it and beat it. And now there's a trail. Um, and uh, but we partnered and we have a sanctioned mountain bike trail. And, uh, and we've talked about how to do other things. And I identified a piece of property that's actually a retention pond. And, um, and I have directed my staff to investigate uh, with, the, uh, the, uh, uh, with the flood control district about how maybe we can make that uh, more usable. And who knows, Tracy, you just may have given birth a mountain bike, uh, a, a not a mountain bike, but a uh, ATV trail, uh, because it's it's on it's on the east side of 59 uh, from Keith Wise. It's almost directly across from it. Uh, it's, uh, the, they're doing the basin right uh, on behind my neighborhood. Yeah, no, no, it's not. It's it's north that of that. Way. It's north of that. Uh, but uh, but we're I. I I have identified it and my staff is working with uh, with the flood control district to see what kind of opportunities we can create out of that. But I'll keep an ATV park in mind. All right. Okay. That's All right. It. Thank, Thank you. you. What, uh, where'd you serve? Army, Navy? I was Army stationed in Goldstead, Germany. Army strong. You go, right. girl. Thank you. All right. Next. Oh, Claude, let's give you another shot, man. <laughs> You're, you're muted. You're muted, buddy. You're muted. There you go. Oh, no, no. You're still muted. You're still muted, Claude. Claude. Oh, man. You're still muted, buddy. You are still muted. There you go. Oh, something's wrong, buddy. Something is wrong because... You're on mute. Uh, uh, my my apologies, Claude. Uh, if you will drop your phone in the in the chat um, privately to Jorge, we'll give you a call. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you a message, Claude, and um, and you can give me a call, and we'll uh, we'll catch up with you um, in concern chat. Good deal, Luke. You got your hand up, buddy. Uh, I'm muted. Yeah, you we'll hear me. You All right. Bet. 
Um, you and I have talked before, and I've, I've talked quite a bit about uh, bike parks and pump tracks uh, mm -hmm. here in Precinct 2. Um, I know we've talked quite a bit with uh, our folks here, and uh, you know we're building a lot of trails. Um, I think we need to build some areas for kids uh, and adults alike to be able to get out and start building some of those skills. Uh, and really build the love for bicycling and that piece uh, at a young age. Yep. Um, I know we have a, a, a rather large following for uh, Seabrook Pump Track uh, and been working with the city and now working on some uh, uh, fundraising pieces that is going to be coming up at the beginning of next year. Um, we would love to partner up uh, with you guys to see if there's some funding that uh, – uh, precinct two could offer um, and see what we can do to make this a reality. You know, uh, Paris, Texas has built a large one. San Antonio just built one. We have uh, one. You're, you're throwing down a gauntlet, man. You're yeah. challenging us. Well, <laughs> north of Houston, all the way out there. At as Greens long Point as you Mall. don't mention Dallas, uh, we are, we're going to stay friends, man. You mentioned Dallas. We got a problem. <laughs> nobody goes to Dallas. There you go. It's another country. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, but, you know, looking at Europe and looking at a lot of other places, these, these things are all over the place. You're absolutely um, right. I mean, I, I, I tell you what, uh, Luke, uh, connect with, uh, with Chris uh, Sadler with my office. He's the one that okay. takes care of our parks and, um, and, we have talked about this. Um, the second thing is we do have our foundation precinct together uh, that we can, it's a nonprofit, so we can help with the fundraising for this. And so we just need to factor this into our, uh, uh, our, our strategy uh, on fundraising. Jose just mentioned that uh, Yellowbird Trails does have a pump track on it. Uh, and, uh, and so we will, uh, uh, Yellowbird is is located at uh, Jim Fontino Park off of uh, Wallaceville, uh, so come by and visit it. But uh, since Jose is on the line, connect with Jose Jimenez as well. You can send him a direct uh, direct message. And uh, but let's let's get this into our into our uh, uh, planning room, and uh, we'll start working together. So okay. it's, yeah. it's, it's it's important. Look, yeah. I've already I, I've already seen the value of it, and uh, I'm on board with you. Okay, awesome. Yeah, because uh, here in Seabrook, we've already put it into the CIP, um, and we are working with uh, our mayor as well as I saw that Kevin Padgett was on this meeting as well. Um, you know, we we have a lot of interest in it, uh, especially down in this area. So um, good. I will uh, I will connect up with uh, you said Chris. Yes, uh, Chris Adler and Jose Jimenez. And Jose Jimenez. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, and, and let me know when you're riding, man, so I can catch you up with you. Hey, I'm, I'm uh, ready to ride anytime. Let's. All uh, right. I, I love getting out in the street and riding still, but uh, uh, getting out on the track and doing some of that. You know, one of the big things, I know the Yellowbird does have a dirt one. Um, you know, preferably, I would like to look at uh, asphalt-based, such as, you know, most of the other ones. Um, it does open it up to uh, skateboards, scooters, uh, and I've uh, even talked with a couple of folks in the wheelchair community uh, that say they would like to get out and have some more active fun places such as a pump track uh, to be able to, um, because I know that the, uh, from my understanding, and I'm not sure because I haven't asked them, but the uh, uh, one north of Houston does not allow wheelchairs on their pump track. So we do. There we go. All right, man. I appreciate cool. it. You're welcome, Luke. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, sir. All righty. Anyone else? Okay. Am I missing someone? Yeah, I think we're uh, we're cut up. Uh, I've been keeping track of the chat. Um, I think we're, we're in good shape. Wonderful. All right. Well, folks, please give it up for Katie and Asakura. Give it up for my team and give it up for yourselves. Uh, we have had a phenomenal uh, turnout tonight, 93, almost 100 people at the peak, and we continue to have a significant number uh, to stay on, and so I'm, I'm very grateful to all of you. Thank you, and this has been very, very productive. Uh, the input that you've given us is, uh, is very helpful, and, um, and it helps us make our plans and our, our ideas even better. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.
Um, and uh, Jorge, and uh, Doug, Doug Peterson, Mr. NASA, Mr. Clear Lake, uh, and, and one of the chief architects of like exploration green. Uh, You're so, here. Okay, so Doug, thank you for all you've done over there. It's a beautiful, beautiful park. I've already ridden it and uh, it's exciting to see what you and the community have brought together. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, man. Thank you. And uh, honored to have you on the team. All righty. Any, uh, Jorge, any, any last thoughts? Oh, whoa, whoa, pa yeah, Pastor, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. I did promise Mecca that every time I'm on a meeting, I will pump out the word about their uh, Day of the Dead. It's about oh, to yeah. start. I put it in the chat. Uh, even with COVID, my son's a visual art teacher there, plug. Um, but they're a beautiful place. We've been going there for decades. Y'all have too. Alex have been there 40 years. And please support Mecca and their programs, Multicultural Counseling Through Arts. I love me some Alice and I love me some Mecca. So thank you for supporting them. Uh, all right. Uh, Jorge, where are we thank at? Commissioner, thank you, everyone. I think we're good. Um, I appreciate everyone coming and hanging in there uh, for the duration of the meeting. Uh, You'll have a good night. Thank all right. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you all. Be safe. Thank you. Take care.